Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. I found a paper bag that I had magnet and steel corners in. So I have put them into their appropriate homes and I thought, okay, I can use this paper bag for something else. I didn't want to alter it in um, a decorative way because it's a little bit too big sometimes to go in parcels when you're wanting something smaller. So I thought I'd turn it into a small journal and the journal is going to measure nine and a half inches long by four and a half wide. I wrote it up here so that I wouldn't forget. And I've already placed the piece of washi tape. It's nice wide stuff. And I've got that down the middle to reinforce the spine. So I've cut some pages or some papers that are going to fit on that part. So let's get to and do that. Now I'm looking for my double sided tape. doing a little bit of brainstorming there with myself. I just thought I'd bring you along with this one from start to finish. It probably will look, probably only take me a day to do it because it's so small. There are only four pieces of paper inside. But when I finished padding it out with pockets and tags and, and stuff like that, I think it's going to be quite a beautiful fluffy journal. Now I heard that expression from Janet Nash. I was watching her YouTube channel on um, <coughs> finding peaceful moments for yourself and some of my most peaceful moments are when I'm crafting I don't have a lot of noise going on in my house you know there's just me here and sometimes I get so enwrapped in what I'm doing that I forget to do other things like housework <laughs> that's swearing isn't it housework saying housework to a crafter you get it done because you have to but then you get on to the more fun things. Now, because I have now, there is a name of this pretty little thing again. I was asked what I called it, and it is called the Quick Six. It's available from my local stockist that I mention quite often. The company name is Paper Flourish. I am not um, sponsored by them at all. I just enjoy using their products. Now, this is a We Are Memories Keeper Quick Six. It does multifunction. You've got a flat end there, which is fantastic for getting your backings off your double-sided tape. It's also got a very fine end there that you can poke little pieces out from your dies if they get stuck. And then the sticky part of this is taking the other end off. And you've got this little blob of green. It's almost like, um, oh, what's it called? I can't think of the, the other name for it, but it's sticky and you can pick things up with it like sequins and little beads and you know bits of paper if you drop them on the floor you can quickly take that off and pick up your papers as well. It's a very versatile little tool. Most good craft, craft stockists would have them or something similar to it. Now I'm going to use my glue stick to adhere from there. No, I'm not, because I used the last of them. Oh, good one, Ruth. Okay, so it looks like it's good old wet glue. Just a little bit. I don't need a lot, just to hold it in place in the centre. Because I've got the double-sided tape for the outsides. Now I'm making sure I've got this up the right way. I don't want to start off with my text upside down, do I? No! Okay. And one for the back as well. And I think I might do it a different colour. Just, it's the other side of this. But I thought, why not? going to be a tad long. Okay, rough as eyeball, quarter inch approximately off. Okay, done in the bin. The other backing pieces in the bin as well. So I don't 
to get myself all confused. Which is really easy to do with me at the moment. You know, confusion is my second name, I'm sure of it. It's Ruth Confusion Burr, there you go. <laughs> Just a little joke of myself, I'm allowed to do that. And no, I'm not suffering from any old person's problem. I just have those moments where, like everybody, we lose track of what we're doing in a particular moment. We get distracted by something different. It's very easy to understand distractive moments. And like it all my life, actually, so I can't claim old person's disease, can I? ever moves. I don't know what I did before I discovered double sided tape. Oh my gosh. What a craft changing and mind blow that was. Everything then became a fix it. Double sided tape, double sided tape. And then I was watching other people saying but it's not permanent, you need to put some other stuff with it. I said, okay, I can do that. But I've had things in my journals and in my scrapbooks for over 10 years and they haven't come adrift on me yet, so I'm not stressing too much about that. Oh, and then I did the same thing. Oh, well. Uniformity, I'm calling it now. <laughs> Oh dear. Press it down nice and firmly with the bone folder. These are also magical inventions. I know they've been out for decades, but I still am in love with my bone folder. Okay, now the front cover will have the pocket in it there because that's the front of the bag. I did have to cut off the extra piece at the back because it was riddled with sticky tape and it all got torn and all that sort of palaver. Now I've used a magazine that I received in the mail, some old journaling paper, and I've just put two sheets of the journaling paper in and two sheets or three sheets of the magazine. So there's one, two, three, four, five, ten, is 20 pages to, to play with, so I'm really in love with that idea. Okay, now I had the other piece of this, and I think I will now turn it over, because I want pretty on the inside now. Not that the outside won't be pretty, because once I start decorating these pages, anything goes. In this one, it'll definitely be anything goes, because I just want it to be anything goes. Now, because I have the smaller strip up the top folded over, I'm going to use very fine double-sided tape just on the very edge of my pocket flap, if I can call it that, just to make sure it stays down. And I miss the very edge of it, so never mind. The wet glue will hold it in place for me.
because I put the double sided tape all the way from crease down to crease it's going to hold the corners down there for me which is always a bit of a battle when you're trying to get things just right now the wet glue comes into play here and because it's a nice warm day here in Adelaide my glue is ultra runny so I'm going to run the the glue down on top of the big run of double sided tape and just be very careful that I get it close to the fold on the top and bottom hopefully without using too much I've got a little blob there Wet glue is forgiving, it gives you a bit of a wriggle room, but when you've got double sided tape involved, there's no wriggle room because the tape grabs and your wet glue just follows along with the party line. Now I've got some, a couple of pretty sheets of paper here that I thought would be nice in there, but that is too wide for that one, but it'll be just right the back. Yep, watching again. My magic eyeballing here. Oh, that's not very straight, but it's okay. This is just a quick little journal, and it doesn't have to be perfect. I have to keep reminding myself that it doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm not going to fold the corners in with this one, I'm just going to keep it fairly flat. I'm going to be using the blue again. And it really is one of the quickest types of journals I've ever made, including the sewing in process, which, as Janet showed us today, she just does, you know, with these little quick journals, she does an over under, over under type of signature. Where is it? I'm trying to find the middle. So it's sewn into there, back through here, out there, back there, and not tied. And it's fairly stable. It has got a little bit of a wriggle, but not much not much, no more than, you know, if I had a three signature in there, or a three, a pamphlet stitch signature, it's, um, or sewing, sorry, it's fairly quick, fairly easy. I just fell in love with the whole concept of, you know, something small, something quick, but something that's so effective. Because if you go along and have a look at her video, um, I won't promise to put the link below, that is something I'm not terribly good at and I forgot to bookmark it but it's Janet Nash N-A-S-H oh this glue is so runny this morning it's amazing I suppose you have to expect that when your weather is um, you know, somewhere around the 40 degree mark or heading that way, 40 degrees Celsius, what, what that is in Fahrenheit, I'm not exactly sure. I know it's very hot though. <laughs> so I'm doing this in the morning and therefore it is a lot better. Now I'm just going to pop this aside and bring my cutter back in so that I can cut the other side of that cover so that it fits a little better. It doesn't need to be much, but I'm not terribly good at cutting long lengths um, straight.
not by hand. The cutters are absolutely amazing. I've had this one for oh, 15, 20 years now. My husband saw it at the local post office and thought, yeah, Ruth could use one of those. So he was ever so right. I'm still using it. I, I fret every now and then because I cannot get more blades. So I have to keep it exceptionally clean so that the blade stays fairly sharp. Now I think that I might put no, I've got a I've got a pocket in there. Do I want one in here? Um I don't think so, so I'm just going to adhere this one down because I can always put pockets on the outside. You know, pockets, altered envelopes, whatever. Tags of any size, shape and and quantity, quality, all that wonderful stuff. And I have, you know, a multitude of tags that I've made over years gone by and I've got to start using them. Otherwise they're going to go in the rubbish bin in 12 months time. That's my limit. I've set myself for things I've already used or already made. It's 12 months to use them up or out they go with my new product or well, newer product, you know, things that haven't been altered or used. I'm giving myself six months to start using them. Maybe I'm doing it the wrong way. It should be 12 months for the other stuff and six months for the tag. Yeah, that makes more sense, doesn't it? Give yourself more time to use the, the newer stuff rather than throwing it out. But I've decided that uh, racks are absolutely a wonderful thing. So if you would like a rack from me and to receive some of the things that I have ma been making, please let me know and be prepared to send me an email with your address in it. So, And racks don't cost you anything. They are not expected to have a return. They're not a swap. A rack is a random act of kindness where you send somebody something and expect nothing in return. It is a wonderful way to give joy to people. And I've just started doing that again. I haven't done it for a few years, but I thought, well, I've got so much lovely stuff here that I've made and that is new that I can share and not notice the loss. And that is the best part. You know, if you notice the loss of things when you're giving them away, it's almost very saddening for you. Okay, I don't like the look of that jagged edge on that paper cut there, so... I think what I might do is just cut the little ruffles off the, the front as well as straightening up that other piece. That makes me a little happier. Alright, I don't know. I didn't even put the timer on this morning when I started my video, so I don't know how long I've been carrying on here. My front is not matching up with the back, but that's fine. Now, I will get my little one-inch hole maker and go through here so that when I open up this, I know I'm going to have a pocket in here. about halfway. Alright, so thus far we have two front covers, or the front and the back, and the inside of each one, which has a pocket in each one. So this pocket is in here. I could open the back and put another pocket in there, but I don't want to. I want that to be fairly stable. And we've got another pocket in here and one here so far. So I've still got a couple of sheets of paper so let's just use them while we're here and then I will love and leave you 
so that you can go on with your day and enjoy it. And I will cut up some more papers for this lovely journal so that next time I come to it, we can share it again and make more prettiness happen. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Like I said, it's, it's a quick way to do it. And, you know, for an afternoon's activity, I think you're on a bit of a winner. Because it doesn't matter what sort of paper you put into it. It can be old, it can be young, it can be handwriting paper, it can be ledger paper like this stuff. Um, it can be magazine, it can be whatever you've got. You know, junk mail, magazines. Um, books even with the text on them, you know, a reading book, a novel, anything at all that you've got on hand that you're prepared to tear out of something and put into something new. So just a reminder about the rack, if you'd like one, please let me know and I will, you know, put together a small box or a small bag or something like that with something that's for you. You may re I won't put my return address on it unless it's overseas and then I have to. But uh, anywhere in Australia, you might just receive a parcel. But like I said, be prepared to send me an email with your address in it. I will put my email address in my community page. So head over there to see it. And I will definitely be looking for some names and addresses because I am quite serious with this. If I can send out one every two weeks, whoops, I squeezed my glue and nearly lost it all over the place. If I can send out um, one or two a fortnight, that would be absolutely wonderful for me. And I would love to put a smile on your face when you receive something in the mail. Now I've got two more little narrow strips here that I could put one here, couldn't I? Or is that going to take out too much of my journaling space? Think, think, think. Maybe I could add to that bit there. So it becomes a wider page. I'll think about that. Okay, but for now, I think this is enough for the first time round. I'll see what I can come up with something else for that front cover because it looks a bit bare. Even though it's pretty, it's still too bare. So we'll find something. This is going to be a real hodgepodge. It's going to be a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of something else. So stay tuned. I don't even know what to, I think I'll just call it hodgepodge. This is my hodgepodge album, ladies and gents. I will catch up with you in the next video. Stay safe, keep crafting, and whatever you do, keep smiling. Bye for now.